welcome to the TMC Newsroom. Thanks for watching. My name is Rich Tarani, and on our program today is Andy Abramson. He's the CEO of Communicano. Andy, how are you? I'm great, Rich. Thanks for having me here. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I thought it made sense to talk a little bit about your company because uh, from TMC's perspective, uh, being a, a media company, we see you doing so many different things uh, to help your clients excel and to uh, grow their sales, to help them get purchased, acquired, and you've referred to it as influencer relations. And I, I was wondering if you could, you can talk about that a little bit. Sure can. So influencer relations really is about telling the story so it's told and retold and retold by others. We've created this idea of the Boulevard of Communication, which pretty much defines how information flows from our clients to their particular audiences or, or publics. So we have at the very far end on the street, the earliest adopters, we tend to look at them as the tastemakers. And tastemakers are people who just simply go out and find what's hot, what's cool, and start using it. You know, they, they've got their, their devices and they're using them and they're just using them. And then there's the people a little further down the block. We call them trendsetters. Now, a trendsetter will say, I really love my iPad. And my iPad is an awesome device. You should have an iPad too. So they're kind of pimping it up a little bit and adding their little personal spin. But they're still early. They haven't, they haven't hit the point of where what they know is old. Then we move a little further down the line and we get to the opinion leaders. Now, the opinion leaders are gatekeepers. They may know what the tastemaker knows when the tastemaker knows it or when the trendsetter knows it, but they want to wait until they feel that their audience who reads them, listens to them, watches them, is ready to accept the information. And that's the opinion leaders. And then ultimately you have the followers. And we effectively refer to followers, anybody who has to say, Rich, should I buy an iPad? Rich, should I get a new iPhone? Uh, Rich, which carrier should I go to? Well, a follower is somebody who always needs someone else to tell them what's new. And what differentiates a follower from an opinion leader is the opinion leader is ready to tell somebody what's good. The follower just wants somebody to tell them, to lead them, to guide them. So as we work this boulevard of communications, we're constantly looking at who listens to who, who reads what, who follows whom. So it switches into um, what we refer to as BAM, blogger, analyst, and media. And you know we've worked with companies like Grand Central that were bought by Google and SiteSpeed and many others. And one of the things that we've put into this mix in, in our BAM, you know, like think of the old Batman show, BAM, BAM, pow, pow. That's kind of where it came from. The idea of blogger, analyst, and media. And if you think about it, that's a, they're also parallel to that entire right. influencer relations chain of the Boulevard of Communication. Bloggers, um, bloggers are very important, analysts are very important, media is very important. We created this thing called the pressure cooker model. So if you like to cook, everyone knows how the pressure cooker works. You, know, you put the stuff in the pot, you put the lid on, you put the little gauge on, you crank up the heat. Well, the bloggers and the social medias, you know, the Twitterers, the Facebookers, the people in LinkedIn, that whole community, separate from just user-generated content, they provide that heat at the bottom. Right. And they really crank up the heat. So if you look at like Grand Central years ago, three years ago, four years ago, we were cranking the heat up with all the bloggers. Then we went to the analysts, and the analysts were, were framing out the story. Well, the analysts provide metrics, size of market, validation. And then ultimately the story got taken to, uh, by the traditional PR agency that was working with Grand Central, it got taken to the mainstream press. Well, by then, the heat was so hot and the right. story was framed out that the traditional media had only one way to go. Like a pressure cooker, pop, went the story. And then, of course, everything else is history. Nine months later, after we started with um, Craig and Vincent, Grand Central was bought. We applied the same kind of ideas to sites. It's not people. Google Voice. It's not Google Voice, which anybody can get now. And back then, you really needed to get invited in and get approved in. Site speed, same thing. We were able to really apply those same types of principles with Nokia, with the Blogger Relations program. When we started Blogger Relations in, 19, in 2005, there was no such thing as Blogger Relations. It was just 
a subset of what agencies did, and they were treating bloggers just like, well, regular press. And we said, no, there's a different way to do this. And we went out and we looked for the influencers, the key people, and they weren't the top 100. I'll never forget, there's one very famous blogger who two years later came to me and said, why am I not getting free phones from Nokia? I said, well, I don't really think you deserve them. Do I get free stuff from everybody else? Yeah, but you're not going to influence the audience Nokia wanted us to go after. So we built the Nokia Blogger Relations Program, and we handpicked the bloggers. And you were one of them. You, you know, we identified right. a lot of key influencers early on. I should mention that because you sent me particularly an N800, it was N8000, N800, N800, right? N800 tablet, I was able to see that Nokia was literally three or four years ahead of Apple uh, in terms of what happened, uh, what they developed with the iPad. They had a device that was so far evolved that it not only did virtually everything that the iPad does, but it also ran Flash right. years, four years earlier. And there's the, the granddaughter of it, or grandson of it, which is the N900, which is the latest MIMO version. So we were able to seed 50 bloggers consistently with phones. We cut it back to about 35 and 25, sometimes as little as five, based on product availability, distribution, right. audience relativity. Sure. We weren't just mass mailing. I'll never forget, Sprint, had this thing called the Ambassadors Program. And the phone arrived in a brown envelope with a Xerox copied letter shoved in. Will you compare that to how our products used to sure. arrive to you in sure. the Christmas Day box? Sure. So we were constantly looking at how do we change the paradigm? And what we did with Nokia in the Blogger Relations Program was we created an experience very similar to Apple. Think about when you, when you buy your iPhone sure. or you get your iPad or you get a Mac, that whole experience from the, the anticipation of it arriving mm -hmm. to the box coming, to opening the shipping box, mm -hmm. to opening the product box. Well, it's we, like jewelry. Correct. We gave it that Tiffany's, that very high-end um, experience, which is, you know, again, one of the reasons why we like to be looked at as different is we want to push the envelope blur the lines, and break the rules. So, Andy, if I'm understanding correctly, the, the, you're telling us that the world has changed and that the right way of going about um, influencing is, or, or just um, dealing with public relations in today's day and age is taking into account social media, bloggers, and, and not just doing the same old public relations that you used That's to. Right. because. What I'm seeing in the market is a lot of companies have uh, their traditional public relations, but they also have a, s a different department that may be dealing with potentially bloggers and maybe a different department dealing with social media. What you're saying is basically that this all needs to, or ideally, this stuff needs to all work together? It's all going to be integrated. So just like you're selling integrated advertising campaigns, integrated um, marketing campaigns with some search engine and some direct marketing and various advertising running and, and special events and trade shows and conference activities and speakers. We look at it holistically. We have a whole egg approach. Um, taking a page out of the old YNR, Young and Rubicam idea of the whole egg creative concept. We don't look at it as individual components. We look at it as stages in a campaign. Sure. So sometimes you need heavy user generated content. Sure. Sometimes you need social media. Sometimes you need bloggers. But let's also look at blogging and RSS are really, a lot of people have misconstrued reporters who use, and publications like TMC, which use RSS feeds and, and have bloggers writing for them as always synonymous, and that's not true. Um, another thing that's occurred in the last 10, 12 years is the democratization of how you get to information. In the old days, we subscribed to a publication. And when that publication came in, we would go through it page by page, to find something interesting we wanted to read. Well, that's been obliterated. The right. search engine, whether it's Yahoo or Google or anything you want that searches Bing, it's obliterated the need to page through or leaf through sure. a magazine, a newspaper, or even a book to find the relevant content. So we're, we've looked at the search engine immediately as the thing that's most important. Right. How can we get information in the search engine? So take like we did for COVID a few years ago to increase the take rate of DSL, ADSL, and broadband T1s, as well as some wireless. We went out and had social media experts work with COVAD, where we gave them 
T1s and ADSL Plus to evaluate against their cable modem or against their DSL line to do honest man in the field reviews. Immediately it drove up the organic search rankings. Sure. The same way articles in the TMC sites drive up people's search, right. which leads to a pathway through a funnel. Right. What did it do? It drove down the cost of acquisition. Sure. It far outstripped the cost of what was being paid to us, and they were able to recover some of that search engine dollars because they didn't have to spend it any longer because they had natural organic search, right. which again, good social media or good influencer relations campaigns will, will drive good search. The right. problem is you have all this gaming going on sure. inside the search engines. You have doorway pages, trigger pages. Um, you have you have splogs grabbing other people's content, which is the bane to you and I. I write a blog. I hate seeing my content on somebody else's Oh, pages. the worst is to get a Google alert where you wrote something. And somebody, uh, and somebody else's <laughs> website. <laughs> yeah. So we all have that happen to us. <laughs> and we kind of go, well, it's flattering. But at the same time, I'm feeling that you know someone just took my wallet and yeah. ran off with my credit card. Because it's our word. It's so the theft of internet, intellectual property, which is even... Sometimes even worse than, I mean, if someone stole $10 from you, they actually took your ideas and claimed that they were theirs. So. I had one person who actually took Tom Keating's content, my content, and Owen Malk's content, and then sold it to a client of hers. And I said, you owe us money. She goes, why? <laughs> she goes, I'm just aggregating. I said, no, you're taking it and you're selling right. it to somebody on the commercial site. So we kind of look at things that, you know, we want to be a little protection as well. But as we evaluate what a client needs, no two programs are the same, though a lot of them have elements that seem similar. Now, some of our viewers are business to consumer, some of them are business to business. Is there a difference? I think it's timing and I think it's um, understanding your audience. One of the questions as we're putting together um, information alerts or news alerts or press releases is who's the customer that you're trying to sell to or influence or persuade? And if you take that into consideration you chop out all the you know the gobbledygook about company words and taglines and sayings which I personally hate and boilerplate I want to get rid of I want a mission to, to eliminate boilerplate as fast as I can the whole key here is that that in B2B you're selling to a business person who is either going to consume it or sell it again right so you have but again the internet is kind of blurred the lines between information that goes to a B2B customer, a wholesaler, a distributor, a representative, and then would be extended down to the consumer. Right. There is no wall. There is no, oh, gee, I'm looking for business. So it doesn't really matter anymore. It, it, the, the, that line of distinction went away when, basically, when HTML arrived. So one last question is, how did you transition from your career in... Uh in sports, and you can tell us a little bit about that to what you're doing today. Well, Willie Sutton once said, when asked the question, why do you rob banks? It's where the money is. Um, I was a very successful executive in sports at a very young age, and I burned out. I just said, I didn't, the lifestyle of, of being a night owl, of, of all of the, um, just everything that was around me at, at the age of 28, I found myself winning in negotiations against people with master's degrees. I didn't have my college degree. I decided to go back and finish. And at the same time, I got grabbed by the sixth largest ad agency in the world. So I was going to school in the morning, working all afternoon in a, for a top ten ad agency, and sometimes traveling, you know, two days, three days a week, and telling my professors at the start of the month, I'm going to be away. And um, one thing led to another. I really enjoyed the agency life. I went corporate for a couple of years with Upper Deck and was led all their sports marketing and all their PR and promotion. And the company went from about $28 million to $270 million, $280 million in 18 months. And we all found ourselves fired. Oh. And it was kind of like, you know, you work at Disney or Nike, you, you get this badge of honor. But 18 months after doing all that great work, our whole group was pretty much whacked. And we decided to open up my own agency. And three years later, I started to focus on tech, probably around 95, seeing that as the future. You know, I'd already been online since 80. And, but the good thing is I've been able to bring a lot of my sports learnings working for you know, the greats around the Philadelphia Flyers like Jay Snyder and his father Ed and the great f coach Freddie Shiro and Keith Allen about team building. So like, Keith taught me 
that you take a player who is not quite done, who still has a couple good years left, and you put them on your team to work with somebody who's just coming up. So we've done a lot of that in the agency where we've taken people who have spent 20 years, 25 years, 30 years in AT&T, who are still have five, 10 good years left because they started when they were 18, I started when I was 14, and I've paired them up to help the younger rookies, so to speak, mature and learn the business. Mm. The other thing that I brought with it is, with me is I don't play the idea of client golf or client tennis. You know, when the team went on the ice or when I worked for the Denver Nuggets and the basketball team, they didn't go on the floor to tie or to lose. So I don't play client golf or client tennis, which is the polite game of where you lose to your client. Right. I play to win. I think that's one of the things that sets us apart is that, that sports mentality of winning. Um, eight Last eight years, 19 exits, two companies bought by Google, two IPOs, uh, one of the most successful IPOs in 2003, and just a long string of, of who's bought our clients. And it's that sports mentality of win, 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 play to win, figure out the opposition, outsmart them. Freddie Shiro used to talk to us about the idea to fill them, study the competition, study their moves. And we apply that every day. We, you know, when we look at our axes of differentiation, we look at the way companies are based and how we build their architecture of identity. We really look at how are they going to go out and win, not just go out and play. And by the way, that means no playing nice. So we're kind of like the bad boys of the business. But if you want to win, you, you play with the bad boys. Well, at the end of the day, you, you do what's best for your customer, yeah. it we, sounds like, right? That's what you you're play saying. Hard, so play hard. Play hard. Got to do what you got to do to win it. Yeah. Play hard, play fair, have fun. That's the motto of the agency. That's great. Thanks, Andy. Thank it was you, great Rich. having you on the program. My pleasure.